So I wanted to um, go back and um, give you a little bit more background and basic information um, because we have two different grade levels and everything, just so everybody is on the same uh, level here. Um, so um, I put together some information from the NAC Network for Nanotechnology Workforce Education, um, where they have a uh, course on materials, safety, and equipment, but we're really going to focus on the materials section overview for the nanotechnology. And specifically, this uh, slide deck has uh, unit three, just the materials overview, and I want to do lectures on uh, lecture one, two, three, and five. Um, I put them all in one slide deck. I did cut some of the information that I don't think was directly pertinent to our class here, but um, I will break this up, this video series up into four different series that are hopefully not too long. So the first part is lecture one, which is on atoms, molecules, and materials. And this has a little bit of chemistry and background information and um, just stuff that I think will help make the rest of uh, understanding materials in nano uh, science a little bit better. Um, some of this might be a repeat for you guys, um, hopefully not too much of a repeat. So this whole kind of outline for the four lectures um, will cover the basic building blocks of materials, which are atoms, atoms, molecules, and materials, ways of classifying materials, including bonding type, organic and inorganic materials, and structure. I'm not going to include phase, classifying materials by phase, chemical properties, or physical properties. It didn't seem like it was um, directly related or at the level of our class here at this time. So the basic building blocks of materials are atoms, and atoms make molecules, and molecules make materials, of course. Um, an atom is the smallest unit of an element, and they consist as the chemistry students know, a very tiny, heavy, positively charged nucleus surrounded by much lighter negatively charged electrons. These electrons move around the nucleus, about the nucleus. The atom's nucleus is very tiny and very dense and contains positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons and most of the mass of the atom. The protons and neutrons have a mass each of about 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, which is, as you can imagine, very tiny. Just think one with 24 zeros ahead of it, right? Or 23 zeros ahead of it. While the electrons have a mass of only 0.9 times 10 to the negative 27 grams. And in chemistry, we did it in fractions where the electrons have about one over 1,840 if of a proton. So electrons are almost 2,000 times uh, lighter than a proton. Very, very small. Atoms are neutral, so they have no net electrical charge and contain the same number of protons and electrons. Protons have a plus one charge, electrons a negative one charge. So if you have the same amount, they uh, balance each other out and you have a neutral atom. If an atom loses one or more of its electrons or gains one or more additional electrons, it, is, it has an electrical charge and it is called an ion. So if it loses an electron, it's gonna have a positive charge because electrons are negative. If it gains a negative electron, it'll have a negative charge. So what do the positions of the electrons look like as they go around the nucleus of an atom? And so uh, this uh, slideshow is really focusing a lot on the electrons because the electrons of the atom are really what gives it its chemical, uh, a lot of its chemical and electrical properties. Um, a lot of its properties are based on the electrons. So uh, the, not so much the, nu the nucleus, right? But the electrons around it. So that's why we're kind of focusing on the electrons here. So here is um, not the original picture of the hydrogen atom, but the model that's prior to the current model of the um, atom. And 
it's called the planetary model or the Bohr, B-O-H-R model, because Bohr was one of the key people that kind of came up with this. And what they said at the time was that the nucleus is a super tiny, dense, positively charged, you know, thing, and that the electrons orbit the nucleus in basically like orbitals, like around, like this, the planets go around the sun, the electrons going around the nucleus. Um, I should also make a note that it, this, in this diagram and all the atom diagrams that follow, the nucleus is shown much, much larger than it should be um, because if this were to scale, you wouldn't be able to see the nucleus because it'd be so small. It would be uh, invisible to the naked eye. So this is called the planetary model and it, I, in chemistry, I use this model a lot, not because it's as accurate as possible, but because it's easier to conceptually understand and draw. It has a lot of, you know, reasonably accurate concepts associated with it, but it is not the most accurate model. This is today's picture of the hydrogen atom, and it's called the probability model. In chemistry, regions chemistry, we call it the wave mechanical model, but basically, um, the density of the red dots, so kind of how thick the red dots are, um, tells you how, how, what the probability is of, is of finding the electron in that spot. So you can see the density is higher here and less dense here. There's fewer dots here than there are toward the center. And that tells me that kind of the center ring is where the electron most likely is. And out here, it's less likely to be. So what this is called is a probability distribution. So this is the current model. Um, for a multi-electron atom, so they're using silicon as your example here. Again, you have the nucleus much larger than in real life. And you have the different energy levels of the orbitals out here, all in kind of circles around the nucleus. Um, the more energetic an electron is, the farther its orbital is from the nucleus. So th these guys out here are more ha have a higher energy level than the inner circles there. So there's a thing called valence electrons. And so what are valence electrons and what are core electrons? The electrons around the nucleus are either core electrons or valence electrons. Core electrons are those which are closer to the nucleus. They're tightly bound to the nucleus and they generally do not participate in activities such as chemical reactions and the carrying of electrical currents. So they're just pretty much kind of, they don't participate in almost any chemi chemical, you know, activities. Valence electrons, on the other hand, are the electrons farthest from the nucleus and are most loosely bound. They are the source of activities of interest, such as chemical reactions and carrying of electrical currents. The term core is also used to refer to the core electrons plus the nucleus. Sometimes it's called the kernel also. So you have core electrons and the nucleus, which are just kind of there, and the valence electrons, which are the uh, electrons that really give the atom most of its properties. Okay, so here is a picture like of today's model of the atom for that same silicon atom, which here is shown in the planetary model. This one is shown um, using the current probability model or wave mechanical model, but they're only showing the valence electrons because to draw these weird lobes for all, you know, 14 electrons would be really difficult to do. Um, so they don't do not show the core electrons um, in chemistry and in a lot of places. This is even this is hard to draw right for a person like me, definitely. So we often use as a simple form uh, this Lewis dot structure. So this SI silica, symbol for silicon um, represents the nucleus plus the core electrons. And then the valence electrons are these dots around the outer uh, outside of the um, symbol, silicon symbol. So four lobes here for the valence electrons, four dots here for the valence electrons. Okay, so um, this is just a, a slide comparing, 
comparing the planetary picture to the modern probability picture. And these, the electrons are just in just different circles around the nucleus. And in the probability picture, you have these different shapes, much more complex. That's all I want you to know about, you know, know about that. Um, so these probability distributions describing electron behavior around the nucleus are explained by quantum mechanics, which is really why I want to go through this whole thing is to remind you that at the, at the, um, at the nanoscale, quantum mechanics is the primary um, laws of, of physics that we, um, that we see. We've, we've talked about that before. Okay, so the atomic number of an atom gives the total number of its electrons and protons because they're equal. Um, an atom's atomic mass gives the mass of its protons plus neutrons plus electrons. So, uh, yeah, so that's not going to be a whole number, the atomic mass, right? Um, electrons are very light, so they hardly contribute anything to the actual atomic mass. All atoms with the same atomic number, that means the same number of electrons and protons, have the same chemical properties and are the same element. A given element may be found in nature with different numbers of neutrons, though, in the nucleus, and these are different isotopes of the element. All isotopes of an element have the same atomic number, which is the same number of protons or electrons, and therefore the same chemical properties. Here's a picture of this showing the size of a hydrogen atom as an example, which is about 0.2 nanometers in diameter. And the size of the nucleus of a lithium uh, atom, which is 4.8 femtometers. Femtometers times 10 to the negative. 15, I want to say, you can look it up and check me out. So therefore, an atom is almost 100,000 times bigger than its nucleus. And that's why if this were 100,000 times, 100, times smaller than this diameter here, we wouldn't be able to see it at all. So the atom is at the nanoscale, the nucleus is at the femtoscale. We can see systematics in the chemical properties of the elements by ordering them by atomic number. This ordering is called the periodic table. And what, uh, for chemistry students, we're gonna be getting into this uh, very soon. The organization of the elements on the periodic table. Okay, so I just want to mention this. The elements are organized into groups what I through VIII. So one through eight, using Roman numerals. This is an older system of grouping and I was gonna change it, but I decided to leave it and I'll tell you why. Um, the periods, okay, the elements are organized into groups and periods according to atomic number, that is according to their number of electrons or protons. Elements in the same group have the same number of electrons in their valence shells. This is primarily why I wanted to leave that system there. The elements with the most stable configuration are the noble gases found in group eight with eight electrons in the valence shell and are usually inert. So um, they can't really, they don't react very well at all, um, the noble gases. Um, so I made this to remind you in regions chemistry, the groups are typically numbered one through 18 rather than Roman numerals one through eight. So if you can see this, you'll have to look carefully. This is the older, I guess, uh, way to uh, number the groups on the periodic table or columns. So they have 1A, 2A, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8A. So actually these columns here, they're the ones, they're right. You know, you can see that the, um, well, if you looked at the electron configuration, the valence electrons are all, one for this group, two for this group, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for that group, valence electrons. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And then these group B ones are just kind of weird, right? They, they're, I guess to explain it, the energy levels, once you get to like the larger and more complicated 
electron orbitals get so close to each other that they're not as distinct and distinguishable. So they get a little bit mixed up. So uh, that's why those are the B groups. But in chemistry, we just go one, two, in regents chemistry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 18. All right, putting the basic building blocks together. So I've talked about atoms. And now I'm gonna to talk to you about molecules. Molecules are two or more atoms joined together or bonded together. And then of course, materials are many atoms, molecules, or both bonded together. Okay, so, um, so that ends lecture one, which are about um, mostly about atoms. And then just to let you know that molecules are when two or more atoms are joined together. And then materials, are taking molecules, sometimes atoms and molecules, um, those joined together, that's materials, okay? So that would be the end of this section.